What's up, baby? How you doing? Welcome to the dark side. Yeah, where do you have the dark side, man? Pound dark side. Pound rock on. How you guys doing out there over on YouTube and Facebook and all the podcasting platforms? Also, don't forget the second half of the show is exclusively over on MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com. We go to about 10 o'clock a.m. over there on the radio, discuss a bunch of subjects, listen to a bunch of tunes, get nuts out there. Yesterday, I tried calling the White House, but they weren't open. <laughs> Could you believe that? Our White House wasn't open. Yes, I was calling the White House about their immigration policy. Also, a bunch of reps here in Illinois because of what happened with that baby uh, being uh, sadly, sadly uh, raped and murdered by a POS. And, uh, you know, I was calling some state representatives having fun and uh, very ticked off, man, that most of them didn't answer their phone because they're not available right now. You know, what do we pay these people for, really, man? What do we pay them for? So, anyway, second half of the show, again, is only on MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com. And I am setting up a special email address for our Ruskies, because, man, are you guys hitting me hardcore. On the, You know, when I went on the radio, I knew I'd get international type of deal. Uh, listeners and stuff like that, different listeners that I might not get over on the podcast or on YouTube or Facebook, but damn, man, they, they like request and stuff. I got to get a translator up in this sucker, uh, but it's awesome uh, to have all you guys around the world and you girls around the world as well. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about another case, man. I, I didn't, you know what? I never knew that this stuff was so popular where you know, re-examine cases and stuff and everybody goes crazy, man. They want to hear more. You know, I'm going to, you know, I got to hit the biker news eventually, guys. It's like, damn, man. <laughs> damn. But, hey, keep them emails coming. Info at InsaneThrottleBikerNews.com. If you got a case you want us to look into, uh, skim over it and stuff and maybe air it, uh, send it to us. Uh, all the case information as well as some newspaper coverage of it. Anything you can send us, we'll take a look at it again. So today we're going to be talking about, yes, the famous George Christie. And we're going to try to answer if he was an informant or not for the federal government, according to the stuff that we're going to go over. Now, I know this is a pretty sore issue on the red and white side. You kind of got to split right down the middle when it comes to George Chrissy and Sonny Barger. Sonny being a legend, and, you know, legends aren't ever going to die out, man. Uh, I don't care what they do, uh, what they say, or who they piss off. Nobody's ever going to go against an old-timer. And I think, personally, that's what happened with George. Because I really believe, guys, I really believe it, and we'll go through this material, that George Christie did not rat. He didn't. There's just too much to this guy that goes against that way of thinking. And it's coincidental. It's just coincidental now, guys. If you actually put your biases aside of who you support and who you don't and look at the facts of the case, you can see that it was kind of a vengeful campaign. And like Christie said, he never seen an MC, a 1% MC, hit social media to try to cancel somebody. You know, that happens in the everyday world where, you know, corporations and leftists and all that want to, you know, cancel you out. But you've never seen it done by a 1% MC. One percenters, they don't go on social media. They don't go on Facebook. They don't go on YouTube. They don't go on Twitter. Oh, man, I hate Twitter, man. <laughs> They've hit me so many times already. You know, I guess you can't pick on leftists, I guess, now it. But anyway, a one percenter just doesn't go on the internet. And he even said that. Now, one percenters, 
uh, to me is a lot different than what they could be to you. Uh, I've said this a million freaking times. Uh, one percenters, you got Hells Angels, Pagans, Mongols, Outlaws, uh, Ditos, Sons of Silence, Iron Horsemen, all the old timers. You don't see them on the internet at all. And there's a reason for that. It, the reason for that is they believe in not partaking in media. They don't believe in opening up their world to the outside public. That's a true one percenter right there. Uh, that's the way I've always known them to be. And I guess that's... Uh, you know, a lot of stuff that's changing nowadays because you got different generations coming in. But if you look at the evidence, you look at it. Everything started when George Christie left that club. And again, the smears all over social media. So we're going to get into that kind of stuff right now. And we're going to talk about George Christie's uh, deal. And also, somebody asked me about, because uh, I've been uh, hitting on Nike bikies. That's what they're calling them over in Australia, Nike bikies. Uh, then you had uh, guys asking me about hip-hop bikers, and, you know, here in the States, it's like, oh, my God, here we go. Uh, it's not real hard, guys, to understand what they are, but I guess I have to hold your hand and give you a little lesson in what a Nike bikey is and what a hip-hop biker is and all that kind of shit, uh, you know. Anyway, anyway, so let's get some background on, uh, everybody knows George Christie. If you don't know who George Christie is, you're stupid. That's all I can say. He did 40 years in the Hells Angels. If you know anybody who has done that length of time in that big of a one percenter club, you know they have a special, uh, how can I say Gift breed, they're a special breed. There's not many like them. And especially after, you know, I go down to some of the stuff that uh, George is his face. Now, I did interview George before, and he was very honest, man. Uh, he's charismatic, and I don't get a hint anywhere in him that he would turn and go to the feds. Not after, you know, getting the in depth story. And that's the problem with a lot of people is they don't want to get the whole story. If you're a hardcore super believer in Sonny, well, you're going to believe anything he and that club says about George. Now, if you're a supporter of George, you're going to believe every single thing that he had to say about Sonny and the club. But here's the difference, though, and this is, you know, the beef between them comes and it centers around a 911 call. Anybody that knows MCs know one thing. You always stick to your bylaws no matter who you are. Not supposed to matter who you are. You stick to them bylaws to a T. And that's why you see some of these clubs that have been around 70, 80 years still around today is because they stuck by them bylaws. So the quick background on that split had to do with Sonny calling 911 because there was an issue with his ex-wife or something like that, getting all craziness. And he dialed 911, called the cops, and had them pick her up in an ambulance and stuff. Now, that is something the Hells Angels do. Never call 911. Okay, it is what it is. Me, I didn't see the point of him not calling 911 because she was being a psycho. Uh, and she might have hurt him or might hurt somebody else. So, But that's their bylaws, so you got to stick by that. Now, I guess... Uh, Sonny was denying it to a lot of the members. A lot of members approached George. You know how it goes. You know, you got a lot of people that are pissed off, but they don't want to step forward and confront the problem. Instead, they go to somebody else and let them deal with it. Well, that's what happened in the case of George here. Uh, they went to him. He had the transcripts. He had it all. Saying, well... He called 911. Here's the tapes. Here's the transcripts. Uh, that's 
breaking bylaws. And I guess Sony got all upset. It goes from there. And then in 2011, and you'll hear it from George's own mouth, I'm going to play something off of YouTube where he actually talks about uh, what happened with this tattoo deal. Because it runs everything... Everything has to do with this tattoo bombings and why he was arrested. Again, he left the club in 2011. He did it the right way. He went to the club meeting. He presented his colors. He told them why he's leaving. The whole nine yards. He was out on good. Then, as usual, you know, the politics play into this big time. And this happened because he went against Sonny in that instance, but they called him and said he was out bad. Well, next thing you know, 2011, he's arrested and all that type of stuff. Now everybody's going around calling him a rat. Everybody. They throw that around like, it, you know, they're calling him a rat. Now, I've looked everywhere, everywhere through the case, and I've been doing this for a while now. I just haven't got to the video. But I can't find anywhere where this guy testified against them in court records. I just can't. Maybe you guys can send me something, but I can't find it. Anyway, Hells Angels uh, president arrested for firebombing business rivals. Again, this is what really started it off. Uh, they arrested the former president of the Ventura County chapter of the Hells Angels Outlaw Motorcycle Gang. You really don't want to use them two words together just for that. Uh, he was one of four defendants arrested on federal conspiracy, extortion, and arson charges contained in a six-count indictment stemming from an extortion plot and firebombing of two Ventura tattoo shops in 2007. Very funny deal here. Very funny deal. And this goes to, you know, it's a rat. Well, that was 2007. Now, he leaves the Hells Angels in 2011. The federal government comes to him and tries to get him to work with him. He says no. Just like any old timer would. He says no. Next thing you know, the charges hit. The charges hit for this 2007 thing. Keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, when the owners of the Scratch the Surface and the Twisted Ink refused to shut down, Christie allegedly conspired to firebomb the tattoo shops. Now, why would he, a guy of his fame, and he's got money, care about tattoo? And then this is something I know is tattoo shops. Why would he care if they're operating maybe down the block from him? That's 2007. Nobody was doing this hardly anymore. Now, I don't know how their side of the aisle does it. I don't know. But anyway, uh, July 6th, he allegedly threw Molotov cocktails. He allegedly... Uh, he was in possession of power. He wouldn't have done that. But I'm just saying... Uh, at the time of the fire bombings, now it was directly across the street from uh, Ventura High School. Uh, it was saw, uh, the scratch and surface housed in the same buildings. Now he was charged with three Hobbs Act extortion conspiracy, one count of conspiracy to use fire or explosives, and two counts uh, of fire or explosives to damage. Uh, he was arrested with three other people, and from my understanding... They were Hell's Angels. Now, again, they could have been supporters, whatever, Hell's Angels. I don't know. I should have looked it up. I'm sorry, but Christy talks about it in his book, uh, Exiled on Front Street, I believe it is. Very good book. You guys got to see it. Uh, now, this, uh, you know what? I really love 1percentbikers.com because it gives you a little uh, background into some of the people that we are talking about. Uh, it goes with this history. Now, this is what's interesting to me. He's a 40-year member of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. And they're claiming that he's a rat. I don't believe it. Not for a second. And uh, you know what? 
after all the stuff I've looked into, I, I don't because I was looking at the, I should have brought some of these, but looking at Facebook posts and uh, Twitter stuff from that time, and there was a concerted effort to cancel him. He speaks the truth. That, you know what? He has no reason to lie. He doesn't. Uh, George Christie, he done a lot of stuff while he was in the Angels as far as trying to get clubs together and stuff. And again, yes, I've been hearing, well, oh, us younger generation, we don't want to have nothing with the old beefs. You know what? Uh, you're alarmed. That's all I have to say. Anyway, so in 2011, he was charged with this and three other uh, people. Now, let's go over some of his crimes, and you're going to tell me he's going to flip. And by the way, again, I can't find anywhere where he flipped. Uh, 86, he was charged with conspiracy to commit murder of a drug dealer. He was acquitted, however, had to spend a year in prison by the time of his acquittal. So he didn't rat there. 98, he was indicted on 59 counts relating to distribution of drugs. He spent a year in prison and pled guilty to conspiracy to sell prescription drugs, as well as pleading no contest to filing of a false tax return. Uh, the indictment covered multiple members of the Christie family. Okay, so he didn't rat on the club in 98. 2007, this is the Molotov cocktails are thrown into two tattoo shops. Uh, both located in Ventura. These two tattoo shops were thought to have some connections with the Mongols. Uh, however, are on much better terms with the Angels. I don't believe that anyway. Uh, anyway, that's 2007. 2011, uh, he was indicted along with uh, those other ones about the fire to, uh, bombings. Uh, he uh, was charged with one count of conspiracy to use fire or explosives to damage property and two counts of use of fire or explosives to damage in property. Hmm. Let's see here. Hmm. So, in 1986, he was charged with conspiracy to commit the murder of a drug dealer. Meaning... That's a lot more serious issue than he was facing here. Uh, 2011, uh, George, he's released on $200,000 of bail and placed under house arrest. The trial is due to begin the 31st of January 2012, but however was delayed multiple times and did not start until January of 2013. A rat wouldn't have to take place a two hundred thousand dollar bail bond, and wouldn't have been under house arrest. And the trial was delayed until January twenty thirteen. Uh, on the first of February, a plea deal was reached, which seems him plead guilty to two counts of conspiracy. And from my understanding, and he'll talk about this in his own words, I don't want to put it in his mouth, is the other ones were actually the ones that wanted to go against him. But because Christie was now out of the club, and I have to say that probably didn't make any friends going after Sonny, and he left in 2011, the same year that... They said that he was ratting on people. Now, let's hear his story here. You know, there were all kinds of rumors that I had testified against people and I'd done this and I'd done that. Well, you know, when I got indicted in 2011, I'm the only guy that went to prison. Everybody else testified against me, including, uh, you know, three Hells Angels. Okay, that's three Hells Angels right there. So they did testify against him. And he's the only one that went to jail. But people are saying he's the rat in this case. I don't believe it. Don't believe it. The facts don't uh, add up. So, uh, you know, basically they said I was the leader and I had told them to do certain things. Uh, and I'm referring back to uh, the fire bombings of the tattoo shops. And, uh, you know, I really wanted to tell the judge that uh, it's obvious I didn't have anything to do with it because the tattoo shops were still standing when uh, they threw the fire bombs. You know, I think I'm a lot more accomplished than. <laughs> when when that first goes on, you know these, you know your brother's telling you, you know this is the dude who did it. He told me, right. like what what is the feeling that you have inside you? 
Well, I felt like they betrayed me. And, uh, uh, you know, they had got in trouble for other things, nothing to do with the tattoo shops. But, uh, you know, the FBI had realized I had left the club, and I think they felt it was an opportunity to put the squeeze on me to see if I would cooperate with them. Uh, and uh, I didn't, you know, and I, I wound up uh, on house, house arrest for two years fighting the case, and then I wound up, I got an additional year, and I, I spent that in Texas, which was kind of funny. Because when I got back to Texas, the Banditos uh, run the state of Texas. That's another outlaw bike club we've had issues with over the years. But you have to keep in mind, I was the negotiator for the club uh, for 30 years. So when I got back to Texas to report to the prison back there, the Banditos were there. And I knew all the Banditos that uh, were in prison there. And they had, they had a cell waiting for me. And I wound up selling up with one of the Bandito leaders and... So it was like a home week for me back in Texas. So, the, so there he goes. He tells it to you straight up. They already had something on these other Hells Angels, and they cooperated with the cops. So how, and uh, Christy was the one that did the jail time. So how is it he was the rat? You see how diabolical it can be in a club when it comes to politics. It's like cutthroat, and I think one of the reasons he mentioned it in one of his uh, books is they were at war with over five clubs. So on war, on five fronts, eventually you start turning on your own, and that's one of the reasons why he left the Angels. He Again, he went there, did it right, put his colors on the table, says, I'm leaving. The way you should do it next thing you know he was the one that went after the legend the boss sonny and that's where the lines formed you know half were with christy half with sonny but i have to say man if you're looking at the bylaws of the club if that's what it says in the bylaws then george was in the right now he talked about that about how that went down and now how did this is how it ended uh he got 10 and a half months in prison in connection with the bombing uh he'll serve a sentence out in about two months blah 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 he originally faced eight counts of extortion and use of explosives but pled guilty to one of the counts uh they actually praised the judge for looking at both sides of this which is very rare, very rare. The judge probably said, oh, okay, you know, these guys are looking to cut a deal, and next thing you know, everybody else is out of it except Christy. So do I believe that, and this is my personal opinion, don't take it as gospel, but what I do encourage you to do is actually look at what he's saying Look what the club's saying, and then you'll find the truth somewhere there in the middle. That's all I'm asking you to do before you go and start commenting on some of George's stuff. Well, you're a rat, you're a rat. Well, how do you know he's a rat? Because you've been reading it on the internet? You know, the angels have one thing that you really got to say, damn, man, you're good at that. That is getting their narrative out where they want it to go. That's why they sell so much stuff. That's why they're the only club that's usually brought up when it comes to outlaw biker stuff. They got their persona out there. So what makes you think that they can't get out there that George Christie is a rat if that's what they want to put there? And the problem with people is you never, ever, ever, ever do your own research. You always let it come back to where, well, this person said and that person said. That ain't the way to base an opinion on. That's just being some high school fucking idiots, if you ask me. Nasty business there, man. You got to be able to do your own research and then make up your mind. Don't go off of what other people say. Now, you watch the, watch the haters, okay? 
Watch the haters in the comments sections over on Facebook and YouTube this video. You'll see people coming back and forth on both sides accusing one or the other. Again, they don't do their research. If the bylaws of their club, which you're probably not a part of, say that a member cannot call 911 in any instance, that means George was correct. He was standing up for the bylaws of the club, and if you know bylaws again, that's the only thing that holds you together when you follow them. It's when you do not follow those bylaws that things get screwed up and start going into different directions. My question would be, this media campaign on social media to, to brand George a rat started in 2011. That's when he was arrested after refusing to cooperate with the cops. Again, a rat wouldn't get out on bond on $200,000. They wouldn't have been put on house arrest. They would have just walked free and got put in some PC camp. So right there, it tells you, well, he's being on spot about that if you look at the facts. If you look at the facts again. But 2011, he left the club, and what better payback from the guys up at the top and i really do feel sorry for george because at that one meeting that i believe it was a west coast uh, regional meeting or whatever it was came to him and were disgusted by the actions of the top honcho of calling 911 going against the bylaws they went to him because they didn't have the cojones to address the problem themselves. So, George steps up. He confronts the problem. Guess what? It's crickets. The rest is crickets. They abandon him. Is that brotherhood? Or is that brotherhood and betrayal right there? A lot of people that really are in love with this type of life... I can't believe the kicking of balls that they get in the end when somebody they were supposed to be brothers with freaking screws them. And that's one thing that a lot of these stories have in common is a brother that screws somebody else. It's not supposed to happen if you're brothers, doesn't it? Anyway, so 2011, they find their way in to get in uh, George Christie. That's when they exact a revenge on him and say, well, he was a rat. He did this. He did that. Well, I don't see that. I don't see that. There's nowhere that proves that, that he did that. I suggest you go back. Hold on. I got to sneeze here. <coughs> hate when that happens. Go back to my interview with him. Listen to that. Listen to the, all the other interviews that he's done. Check Exile on Front Street. I love that book. Check it out. And see if his story has changed at all. There's interviews from all different years. All kinds of years that if he was lying, something would have changed in them accounts. They haven't. What I see here, personally, is no, George is not a rat. He just went up against the legend and lost. Now, for those that are saying, well, he's going out there on Outlaw Chronicles, or he's doing this, or he's doing that. That makes him a No, it don't. That makes him, you know what, he put 40 years and how many tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars into that club... And got bent over and screwed in the end, in my opinion. Yeah, you're going to want to recoup some of that damn money. And why not? Why not? He followed the rules. He followed the bylaws. He was doing what was supposed to be done according to his club. And in the end, he got screwed. Saying, hey, I'll, you know, he's a rat this, he's a rat that. He's going to go make his money. That's the way it's supposed to be. Go make your money. Because you guaranteed somebody else out there is hustling like a hell. I'm just saying, man. Hustling like hell. 
to make their money, so why shouldn't he? One thing about George was, I remember him, man, in the 90s, man. He was trying to get a lot of people together. You know, everybody talks about Kumbaya and coming together. Well, this man actually tried. Sometimes it did, and a couple months later it fell apart because, you know, it's just tribal stuff. It's, you know, everybody wants to be the big boy on the block. That's never going to change. I don't care what generation you're in. It's just never going to change. But he tried, and he was known for that. So, we're going to go to the second half of the program over on MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com. Join us. Come on and join us, man. It gets really fun out there. I'm unleashed over on the radio, man. I can have all kinds of good times. We do all kinds of fun stuff the whole nine yards. So, let me know in the comments section over on YouTube, Facebook, uh, what you guys think. Do you consider him a rat? Have you seen the evidence to prove that he was one? Just asking. So with that, I'm going to end this segment. Uh, we're going to go and uh, play some cool music when I get over on the other station. Do some funny phone calls, all that stuff. Uh, China Dow will be joining me. So get on over there. You can listen on Discord, MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com, or download the Xeno app. And listen to us right there from your cell phone. I'll talk to you. <laughs> 